Ubisoft announced big changes to Reda Shop that are already live, so I want to go over them and also showcase the new items that he is selling in action in this video. And I asked Ubisoft about potential changes to the Transmog system, and they had a response, like that was during my recent interview. So a ton to go over, if you like that, then a like on the video would of course really help me out, and let's go. Congrats to Joe Hammer for winning my previous Helix Credit Pack giveaway number 17. I will send you an email with a gift card, and I already started a brand new one for 2300 credits. You can enter via the link in the pinned comment and these giveaways are only for subscribers of the channel. So you have to be a subscriber first. Good luck. And yes, with this giveaway you have a chance to win the new Tyrannus pack that is out right now. I will have a more in-depth video on it in the future. But for now, short answer, yes, it's really overpowered. Now right now I want to focus on the big news regarding Reda's shop. Maybe you already saw it during my weekly reset stream. But Reda is now selling 6 items in the weekly selection instead of 3. This is new and every weekly selection moving forward will now have 6 items. And I'll of course showcase these items in a second. But what we now see is that every slot has a different type of item. So I'm curious if this will remain the same. So that we always have a diverse lineup every weekly selection. And the daily selection just keeps on rolling next to this by the way throughout the week. And they now added the Black Raven items to Reda shop. Because we find the chest in the daily selection right now. And that one is not that exciting because it of course looks like the hidden one's chest. But it will be worth it to keep an eye out for that amazing mask from this Black Raven pack. And maybe that Black Wolf. Like fingers crossed for any wolf. But now with 6 items in the weekly selection. You would think that we have a higher chance to get one in the future, right? We do already see a mount right now that Draugr Horse is available for 150 Opal. And I think that this is the coolest, like, regular horse in the game. A lot of details on the head, kind of armor, glowing eyes. The skills as well, I really dig it. It only stands out next to the other horses in the game. So pretty nice. Another highlight is the first Nilfheim armor piece that we, I think, ever saw at Reda. The headgear, which is now for sale for 120 opal. It looks kind of weird without the full set, but it does have that cool effect that you might have seen during the photo mode showcase, where if you untoggle the headgear during the photo mode, you keep the glowing eyes. So that is a pretty cool thing you can do with this headgear. And then we once again see that Yukon Fasara hammer, and I hope I pronounced it right. It's basically Thor's hammer, but from Yuko, the thunder god of the Finnish mythology. It's not bad, extra heavy damage when dodging, so you dodge, get the buff for a really short time, 2.5 seconds, and then have to increase the damage. As said before, it's really one of the best looking hammers in the game, and now thanks to the transmog system, you can put it over any other hammer in the game, or you can have two of them, which is quite cool. And there are also other items for sale, the pretty big Blood Eagle Settlement Totem that I'm not sure I've ever seen before, because it was not part of the Twitch drops we of course did. Looks quite cool. You also got the Black Raven back tattoo, which is not that bad too, actually. I find it kind of nice. And last but not least, totally not for everyone, I quite dig it. The unicorn figurehead for your ship with sparkles, a cat, so why not? And good to note, and that's another big change to Reda system, is that Ubisoft decreased the prices for these items. So the naval items were first 75, but will now be 35. And also settlement and tattoos now cost 35 opal instead of 50. So now maybe more people will get them. I still don't think it's really worth the opal. But like if you really see something you're not wasting a lot of opal by buying it. I would get the mount if I had to pick like one item from the selection myself. Oh and I want to thank everyone who helped reach the community goal. Because you can already go to the Ubisoft Connect section of the game. And claim the 10 opal there because we already completed it. We are even like almost at double the amount that is needed. So it will maybe be fun to try and complete these goals if we work together. I mean this was pretty easy but maybe we can try and see if we can complete the others as well. I also asked about improvements to the contracts and the Ubisoft Connect challenges like on Twitter. Maybe a little too much after they already announced the great Rada changes. But I think like having new contracts and Connect challenges 
would make the Reddit system even better, like even more exciting. Now it's great to see them listening to feedback and significantly improving on a system. And another piece of feedback we saw recently is regarding the transmog feature. With of course the big one being having to pay 50 silver for each change. It just feels limiting. Like I feel less enticed to change something and I will just keep it as it is. Well, if I did not have to think about the silver, I would have maybe used this feature more. So I asked Jose, the post launch producer on Valhalla, during my interview about this. I cut my question a bit because you already know what it's about. Let's hear the reason behind it. So, can you tell me, are you changing anything to the current system based on that feedback? Or will it be uh, the same? So 50 silver per change. So in terms of the price, we're continuing to look, uh, you know, you have to assume that we know exactly how much silver there is in the game, right? Yeah. We know how many uh, uh, replayable, I won't say highly replayable, but replayable river raids. Uh, you know, you know that there's ways to get silver. Maybe it is too high. I don't know. We need to look at the data. We need to see uh, uh, if, you know, if you guys are using it, how often you guys are using it. And then a little later, he reconfirms that it's something they will be looking at. And for the price? You know this is something that we're looking into okay we know we know yeah. that there's plenty of silver in the game we know that there's more ways that people can get silver you know in the end it might be uh, annoying i overall still prefer the odyssey system but it's good to know the reason behind this choice he also later notes that they wanted to give value to the system and if there's enough silver in this game which is basically useless after getting everything from the merchants then I get that they wanted to like add a new money sink, but I do hope they like lower the price to 10 silver or so. But yeah, we will have to wait and see. Another big difference compared to the transmog system in Odyssey that we now also see in Immortals Phoenix Rising is that you can switch items on the fly. And especially on older gen consoles, it can take up to a minute to fast travel to the settlement as I showed you in my comparison video around the launch of the game. But yeah, I don't think we should expect a change to that because it's all linked to the settlement feature, which of course core to Valhalla. In a very general sense, well, you know, uh, we are not like previous ACs. You know that the way you're playing, uh, you know, and I think this applies to you as well. You're not necessarily switching your gear all the time, right? You want to have the entire set, you want to have the perks. So we already know that uh, it's not the same kind of game as, uh, you know, you mentioned Odyssey, as Odyssey was. Yeah. I know that people maybe didn't love the idea of having to travel to the settlement, but you know, from in a very meta level that is a creative choice that from the beginning when we when we played when we started uh, you know playing the settlement getting a feel for it we knew that it would only be as important and as impactful to you as we made it and to you know for you to have this attachment of this feeling like this is my home it, it also means like what does it do for you right because you know, as a player you only appreciate the things that somehow give you a benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you see this represented in other services. Again, always interesting to hear the thought process behind the things we are seeing in the game. And while it would be way more convenient to change our character mount and the look of our gear on the fly, it would totally make the settlement less impactful. Like now I visit the settlement like very frequently. I start the game there every time. So I still prefer the Odyssey Immortals approach, more convenience, but I do get where they are coming from. Still curious what will happen with the Druze DLC though. Like it makes sense that we use the Atlas to travel to Ireland, but do we then have to travel back each time if we want to use the Transmog, change the look of Eivor or see Reda? Like I really hope these systems travel with us to a new city in Ireland so we can just stay in this new location. April 29th can't come soon enough. Really excited for the Season Pass DLC. In the meantime, I of course have a ton of other Valhalla videos coming your way. So totally subscribe to miss nothing. A like on the video would of course really help me out. And totally check out my previous video on brand new skills that will be coming to the game as well. And a new armor set. You can watch it by clicking on the screen. Or I will link to it at the end of our photo mode showcase. That we of course like to do here at the end of every Valhalla video. You can send in your shots via the Valhalla Raptor hashtag on Twitter. Or via the dedicated pictures channel on my Discord, a can join the Discord via the link in the mid comment. Amazing community. Would be awesome if you were there as well. If you are there, accept the rules and then you are able to post. Okay, Joyce, you picked some really cool shots. So why don't you tell about them? Hello, hello, 
First up in the photo mode reel is VIP Pyro over on Twitter who went all assassin mode with Eivor taking a pose with the hidden blade. I think this is the Raven Clan armor yeah. set, but yeah, I yeah. think <laughs> the darker colors. Love the chosen face tattoo as well. Very sneaky. Yeah, very, very cool. Next up is Pen Danny over on Discord who Ooh. went to the mythical world of Asgard and went for an ambient picture of the Bifrost. I thought it was mirrored at first, but I think the pillars underneath the statues are actually that tall. You can look through the Bifrost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a really creative shot. Uh, and of course, like the whole bridge is empty while, of course, at the start, while going to Asgard, it's completely full. So really love it. And what is that like sort of thing flying there? Do you see is that as well? something flying? Yeah, is that Sunan? <laughs> <laughs> Why be? And finally, we've got Rhea over on Twitter who went to the other mythical world, Jotunheim, with Eivor and the new Astara tattoo set, if you look at the flowers mm -hmm. on yeah. the head and the arms. It took this red-gray color scheme shot when the frost giant is defeated and you see like the leaves that wither from it. I also think the sword fits as well. Which one is it? Yeah, it's actually the Scimitar, looking ah. really, really cool. And I kind of get Ghost of Tsushima vibes, thanks to the leaves. Oh yes, me too. Very, very awesome shot, of course. If you got cool shots, send them our way, and then maybe you'll be in the next video. Subscribe for way more for Holo content, and to check out our previous video by clicking on the screen. For now, we'll speak to you next time, and goodbye. Goodbye.